This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 10, Section 1, Part 2, Mole and Particles. So pause the video, fill in the blanks, and then play to hear my words. So one thing I want to bring to your attention is the word particle is never going to be used in a problem when we're converting from moles to particles or particles to moles. That word particle is going to be changed to atoms, ions, molecules, or formula units. So we want to kind of remind ourselves that we're going to clump all of these words together to call them particles because there's different particles in chemistry. However, the word particle is never going to be seen. So what does an atom really mean? Mean? What does an ion really mean? Well, an atom really means elements. Ions really means that something is charged. A molecule is those molecular or covalent compounds, and a formula unit is the ionic compound. Get it? Mal E. Cool. You know, he's cool because he's got those sunglasses on. All right, so let's go back to what would we see if we're dealing with an atom? And this is going to be important because we want to make sure we're understanding that terminology. So even though we're clumping them all together as a particle, really chemists are going to refer to elements as atoms, right? How many atoms of, let's say, zinc are in 0.5 um, moles um, of that zinc? So what would we actually see? Well, hopefully you have seen that periodic table quite often now and looked at it quite often to know that an element only has one capital letter. So if I see an element and the formula has one capital letter, I'm really referring to atoms. However, if I'm referring to ions, I'm really going to be, be be referring to something that's charged. Now I know it says charged atoms, but if you think about it, a charged atom or a charged polyatomic ion, right? So ions can be either one element with a charge or it could be multiple atoms together with a charge. But either way, an ion is something that has a charge. And the way I'm going to notice that in my formula is I'm going to have a positive or negative and then a number associated with it. If I'm dealing with molecules, I'm dealing with those covalent or molecular compounds. I'm going to see, hmm, how many capital letters? Hopefully you thought of two, but not only that, it's also going to start with what type of element, a metal or a non-metal. Hopefully what comes to mind is I'm going to see more than one capital letter, and it's going to start with a non-metal, and those non-metals are located to the right of that stair-step line. How about formula units? Really, we're ta are talking about ionic compounds. And again, a compound is going to have more than one capital letter, but for an ionic compound to be a formula unit, uh, it's going to start with a metal, and those metals are to the left of that stair-step line. So if you haven't done so already, you might want to rewind, you might want to pause, and you might want to write that information down to the in the margins on your packet of notes, uh, just to make sure that we're understanding what really an atom or how that atom is going to look uh, or what they're really referring to, right? We want to kind of match up what the particle is, uh, that terminology, and what it really is going to be looking like as far as a, a formula is concerned. So one mole, one mole equals Avogadro's number of those atoms, ions, molecules, or formula units. And you notice down here, I really put things because if I want a mole of pencils, let's say, I would need 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those pencils. Just like if I say I need a dozen of eggs, how many eggs would that be? 12, right? So if I need a mole of people, wow, would that be a lot of people? Then I would need 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those people. Okay, so hopefully that kind of makes sense, that this Avogadro's number represents many things. And in order to understand how they're being used in these problems we're going to do soon, we need to really understand that we're going to be talking about atoms, ions, molecules, and formula units. But really, what does that mean as far as chemistry? And what does that mean as far as the formula we're going to see? So let's take some examples. So atomic nitrogen. Here's our formula. Hmm. Nitrogen has one capital letter. And since I'm talking about the atom of nitrogen, that's what that means. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So we have one capital letter. I'm talking about that element of nitrogen. And that's really going to be talked about as far as the particle is concerned about atom. 
However, hopefully you're kind of scratching your head and going, well, nitrogen really doesn't exist as nitrogen atoms. It really exists as that, what did we call these seven diatomic molecules, right? We call them molecules because technically there's two nitrogens together, right? And that's why they have that special classification of a diatomic molecule. But um, uh, so nitrogen gas, and if I wanted a mole of a nitrogen gas in the air, I would need 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those molecules of nitrogen. How about if I want water? Well, again, the formula for water is H2O. Hydrogen, hmm, hydrogen's that funny guy. He's a non-metal on the metal side. So again, it starts as a starts with a non-metal, so this is a covalent or molecular compound. So we're going to classify that as a particle, but a molecule particle, okay? So that's the type of particle it is. So again, just like that Bozeman science, he talked about how many molecules were in 200 milliliters of water. Um, that's what he was referring to, right? He was referring to water as molecules. Now, if I look at this chemical formula, I see one capital letter, so this looks like an atom to me. However, because of that plus two or two plus, now I can refer to it as an ion. So again, I'm not going to refer to it as a particle. I'm going to refer it more specifically as an ion. How about if I do CaF2, calcium fluoride? Well, again, now I see two capital letters, and my first element there is a metal because it's to the left of that stair-step line. And because it is a compound, it's an ionic compound, again, we're going to refer to this particular particle as a formula unit. So if I want a mole of calcium fluoride formula units, I would need 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of them. And last, I have a molecule of sucrose. How do I know it's a molecule? Because I see three capital letters, so it's, I know it's a compound. And because carbon is a non-metal, then I would refer to this particular particle as a molecule. So hopefully you're getting the idea or, or understanding of how we can look at a formula and decide what type of particle it is. You got some mole problems? Call 602, right, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Ha, ha, ha. Again, I like to put these corny jokes in. Hopefully you're laughing um, with me. All right, so right now we need to make sure we have a scientific calculator, and I'm going to show you two of the conversion setups that we're going to be using. So again, you might want to jot these down on the side of your packet or in your um, book area where you put your book notes um, somewhere, especially if you're not that strong yet uh, with dimensional analysis, if dimensional analysis is still uh, kind of giving you a, a challenge. So one of the conversions is going to be going from particles to moles. Now we want to remember that our conversion is one mole equals Avogadro's number of particles. But I will tell you, you'll never see the word particle in the problem. You're going to see atoms, ions, molecules, or formula units. So when I'm going from one of those particles to moles, I'm going to have this set up. Now why do I have it set up this way? Well, if particles is here, particles has to be on the bottom in order to cancel out, and I'm left with moles as an answer. And look at this, one always goes with mole. Doesn't that kind of sound familiar? Um, back in the day when we did conversions between um, uh, uh, metric units, I always said that one went with the larger unit. Well, here the one is always going to be with the mole when we're dealing with the conversion, okay? So the one mole always goes with that conversion. So hopefully in your mind you're thinking, well, if I have to go from particles to moles, this is my setup. How about when we go from moles to particles? Well, the conversion is going to be flipped, right? Why is it going to be flipped? Because again, I want to get rid of the word mole, that unit of mole and I'm going to be left with those particles. And again, those particles are really going to be those atoms, ions, molecules, or formula units. But again, in my conversion, the one always goes with mole. Going to be really important. All right, so let's look at these examples. 
how many moles, ooh, that sounds like what I want, are in 6.8 times 10 to the 24th ions of oxide. Okay, so that should make sense. I'm not talking about oxygen. I'm talking about the oxide ions. Hmm. So I want moles. That's going to be my question mark. So where am I going to be starting? Well, there's my number, and after my number is the ions unit. But remember, ions really is a representative particle. So I'm going to start with that number. And can you come up with, can you come up with which conversion setup are we going to use? Hopefully that makes sense. Why? Because I'm going to cross out uh, ions. I apologize, the word ions should be here. So ions is going to be crossing off with ions, right? So those are our two particle units that we're going to cancel out. And we're going to have um, one mole at the top. So, pause the video, see if you can do the mathematics, and let me remind you, you're going to go in order. So, the number divided by 1 times 1 divided by Avogadro's number, and then the equal. And use that magic EE -E button for the times 10. So, hopefully you pause and you put this in your packet of notes, as well as, did you come up with that answer? And notice, ladies and gentlemen, hmm, it's an ion of oxide, and oxide's formula is O negative 2. All right, let's move on to example number two. Again, how many moles, how many moles, that's going to be my question mark, are in 7.12 times 10 to the 13 atoms? Hmm, well, atoms to me sounds like what I'm going to be starting with, right? Our number here and our unit is right after it. And I'm talking about the atoms of bromine. Again, not to confuse you with how bromine really exists as a diatomic molecule, but we're talking about the atoms of bromine. So again, I'm going to start with my setup. And what does that look like? What is my setup going to look like? Is it going to be atoms over moles or is it going to be moles over atoms? Hopefully in your mind you're going definitely one mole over Avogadro's number of atoms because I want to cancel out those atoms. So again, pause the video, write this in your packet, and then come up with an answer. Use that magic EE -E button, do the information in order, and see if you come up with the correct answer. Hopefully you came up with that. And again, I just wrote down what that atom of bromine's formula would look like. All right, off to number three. How many molecules? Ooh, it looks like we're going the other way. How many molecules are in 1.14 moles of SO3? So that should make sense because molecules, this looks like a molecule to me. It's a covalent compound starting with a non-metal. And so I'm going to start at that 1.14 moles. So again, there's my starting point. Which way is my conversion setup going to be? Is it going to be moles over molecules or molecules over moles? Hopefully in your mind you're thinking, well, definitely molecules over moles because i got to get rid of that mole unit. So again, do the mathematics in order. Use that magic EE -E button and hit that equal sign and see if you get the same answer as I do. Hopefully that makes sense. And again, these are molecules because it's a covalent or molecular compound. Last example here, how many formula units, all right, how many, that would be my question mark, are in 217.3 moles. And again, sometimes they don't write out the word mole, M-O-L is how they abbreviate it. So that's where my starting point is because that's my number, right? I'm starting with my number, but really what's the unit I'm starting with? So here is my setup. What's my conversion going to look like? Moles over formula units or formula units over moles? Hopefully that comes to mind. Again, pause, write this information, do it in your calculator, and see if you get the right answer. Hopefully you got that. And again, I abbreviated, but that really means formula units. And how do I know this is a formula unit? Because it's an ionic compound. It's a compound that starts with a metal. All right, so now you should pause the video, try these, make sure to write out all of the work it's just so you're understanding how to go from one unit to another, and you have those four uh, example problems to refer back to. Then play the video, and again, it's up to you if you want to do one at a time to make sure you're on the right spot or, or you know, doing things correctly, or just try them all at one time. It's up to you. So hopefully, guys, you um, uh, tried them, you wrote down the work, you have that correct setup. It's going to be really, really important, um, and you have some kind of answer. So I'm just going to flip so you can see the answers. So 
So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and if you need to, you can go back and, uh, you know, redo them or have any questions or put some comments in your notes um, as to what's uh, what are you doing correctly or what are you doing incorrectly. All right. See you in class.